What's up everyone? It's Dr. Jordan Taylor, Undergraduate Exercise Science Program Director and Associate Teaching Professor at the University of Kansas. And welcome to another episode of Fitness Facts. Have you been lifting weights for several years and all of a sudden your strength is not increasing on specific lifts? For example, has your bench pl press plateaued? If so, you may just need to add some variety into your strength training program to start seeing gains again on exercises like the bench press. In this episode, I will discuss several training strategies and techniques that more advanced lifters can use to smash through plateaus and continue increasing their bench press strength. It's going to be a good one. Okay, so before I get into some training tips with Ethan uh, to help kind of push you, push you past plateaus and get you out of a rut on your bench press, I want to talk about strength curves, okay? So every exercise that you perform in the gym is going to have a certain strength curve, and there's three of them to talk about, all right? So I'm gonna talk about the ascending strength curve first, okay? So exercises like the bench press, squats, deadlifts, leg press, maybe a military press, overhead shoulder press, these are all examples of exercises that have an ascending strength curve, okay? And if I draw a line, this is what an ascending strength curve is gonna look like. So as the joint angle changes and you approach lockout or extension, say on a bench press, or you approach extension on a shoulder pr press, if you're coming up from a squat and you're approaching full hip and knee extension, you're getting stronger. You have a mechanical advantage as you near that locked out position. Okay, so that's the ascending strength curve, right? The amount of force that you're producing at a given joint angle is increasing as you near that locked out position, okay? So, basically one way to um, kind of challenge yourself is to add elastic bands, which I'm gonna demonstrate here in a bit, to these different exercises that have an ascending strength curve. So, as the band lengthens and you approach the lockout position, as that band is lengthening, you're actually getting more tension and more load being applied to the barbell and to your body. Whereas if you weren't training with that band attached to the barbell, the exercise is gonna be hardest at the bottom, right? Like if you're doing a bench press, it's gonna be most difficult off your chest. There's typically most people have a sticking point about six to eight inches off the chest. And then as you start to extend the elbow, flex the shoulder, horizontally adduct the arm, it's gonna get easier as you approach the lockout. But if you want to apply some extra load and make it tougher as you approach lockout so that you're really training for strength through the full range of motion, that's where you add elastic bands to the barbell or chains or some form of variable resistance that's going to accommodate that motion. Okay, so that's an ascending strength curve. Now, another strength curve is going to be the... descending strength curve okay so this is the line is going to be drawn opposite all right so what are some examples of exercises that have a descending strength curve so you've got things like the barbell row leg curls pull-ups any type of uh, you know dumbbell lateral raise let's take the dumbbell lateral raise for example you can produce a lot of force and it's really easy to laterally raise a dumbbell at the start but as you approach 90 degrees of abduction, as you approach that arm being parallel to the floor, it's much more difficult, okay? So you're stronger at the beginning, weaker at the end. And that's represented here by this descending line, right? Again, pull-ups. If you think about pull-ups, why do you see people that are just doing pull-ups at the bottom half of the range and they're not pulling their chin all the way over the bar? Because it's easier at the bottom, right? They're, it's easier at the start and it gets harder. You're, you're progressively less strong, if you will, as you approach that um, lockout position where you're getting your, your head or your chin above the, the bar that you're pulling yourself up onto. Okay, so that's the descending strength curve. Okay, the last strength curve to talk about is going to be the bell shaped strength curve. All right, so we have bell-shaped. Bell-shaped strength curve, all right? 
Most common examples here of a bell-shaped strength curve would be things like the bicep curl, uh, tricep extension. A lot of single joint exercises have a bell-shaped strength curve. So if we take uh, a bicep curl, you're going to be strongest in the mid-range, right? So as I go from zero degrees of flexion to 90, I'm weaker at the start and I'm going to be strongest at 90 degrees. And then on the descending limb, you get a you're a little weaker and your ability to produce sufficient elbow joint torque decreases as you approach that fully flexed position, all right? And a lot of this has to do with, you know, if muscles are too elongated or in too shortened of a position, like at the beginning and end of that range of motion, there's not as much um, overlap between actin and myosin filaments. So if you have a muscle that's really elongated, the actin and myosin filaments in your muscle are stretched farther apart and they can't bind each other and pr produce a really strong forceful contraction. On the other end, if a muscle's really shortened because of that length tension relationship with the muscle, some of those actin and myosin filaments are overlapping and their ability to produce force is reduced because that muscle's in just such a shortened position. All right, so that's part of the reason for that bell shape with certain exercises. And it's just that whether it's an ascending, descending, or bell-shaped strength curve, there's different joint angles that place your body into a mechanical advantage or mechanical disadvantage and may allow you to produce more torque about a specific joint or less torque, all right? Okay, so the first technique to use, and again, I also want to reiterate that these are advanced techniques. If you're a novice lifter, you're new to training, you've been training, let's say, just a couple months, just stick to traditional progressive overload, learning exercises, learning basic techniques without these bands attached to any of the barbells or dumbbells you're using um, because you're going to make plenty of progress that way. This is a technique for somebody that's been lifting you know, for several years, has hit a plateau, a more advanced lifter, okay, um, to try to help you uh, gain some additional uh, strength, all right? So, what you do here is take a band, always check these bands and make sure they don't have nicks or tears. That one actually is starting to get a little bit of a, a tear in it. But you always, anytime you're using bands, just safety first, right? Check the band, make sure it's got, um, it's, it's healthy, it's in good shape, there's no tears in it, you don't want it snapping in the middle of doing this exercise, all right? So let's think about how these bands work, right? They're elastic, so as you, as the band stretches out, it's going to provide more resistance and more load to this bar as he's bench pressing, all right? And this is beneficial using these bands and applying them to a barbell, it's called variable resistance, because the amount of load that you're having to overcome is going to be increasing as you press the barbell away from your chest and near lockout, all right? So go ahead and dem demonstrate a couple reps you can see how we've just got it attached to the pegs down here. All right, so as he approaches lockout and those bands are stretching out, there's going to be more load, more resistance applied to the bar. So what are we doing? We're using the uh, uh, resistance bands to basically match his strength curve. So this is an ascending strength curve, right? It's hardest at the bottom as he presses up naturally the exercise gets easier. However, with the bands attached, it's going to get harder as he approaches lockout, right? Because of the elastic, that tension from those elastic bands. Okay, so he can take a break. Yep. So I just have him here repping them out all day. But again, think about it. If the bands were not on the bar, as he approaches lockout, it gets easier because it's an ascending strength curve. With the bands attached, it's going to get more difficult as he approaches that lockout position. Um, and hopefully it's going to help strengthen your lockout and make it a little bit easier to, you know, lock that weight at the top of the movement. Okay, so just another way to help you kind of break through plateaus. All right, so the, the next advanced bench press training technique to help you push through plateaus is going to be heavy eccentrics, or they're also called negatives, all right? Now, I would only employ these um, maybe once a week. These can leave you really sore anytime you're overloading the eccentric phase, which is the phase where a muscle is lengthening and producing tension to control or decelerate a load. For example, you're decelerating and controlling that load down to the chest. 
anytime you're really loading up that phase, um, it, it can produce a lot of micro trauma, little tears in the muscle fibers, and that can lead to a lot of inflammation, pain, and delayed onset muscle soreness. So you're going to feel sore after doing these. So I wouldn't do them more than once a week. Um, but again, it's something you can incorporate just three or four sets of these, uh, for instance, into your chest routine uh, to help kind of push through a plateau. And what you're going to do on negatives is you're going to load the barbell with a load that is supra maximal, meaning a load five to 10% heavier than what your max bench press is. Now I've got 225 on here. Ethan's, what is your max bench press? Uh, like 300 pounds, I think. All right, so let's just pretend this was 300 pounds, all right? I would want to load it with five to 10% more weight. So what would that be, 15 to 30 extra pounds? So if this was 300 pounds was his max, I'd add an extra 15 to 30 pounds to it because you can always lift or lower more than you can lift, right? So you, in the eccentric phase, you can always lower more down to your chest than what you can concentrically press off of it, all right? You can always lower more than you lift. Um, so during these eccentrics or negatives, he's gonna do the lowering phase and then I'm gonna help him with the load off of his chest. I'll be helping him in that positive phase. And what this does is, again, it's gonna strengthen the muscles in the chest. It's gonna help you get used to using loads that are heavier than your current one repetition max. Just mentally help prepare you to feel that load. It's gonna allow that you know, nervous system to, to get used to having to recruit and adapt um, to, the, to the heavier stimulus than what you're used to. So again, maybe let's demonstrate a few, Ethan. So go ahead and lay back. So on this, you wanna communicate with your spotter, because again, this is a super maximal load. We're pretending this is more than is one rep max. And you really only wanna do three to five reps, okay? So we'll just go for a set of five. So again, I'm gonna lift off. He's gonna lower it slow and controlled, and then I'm helping with the positive. So lower it, slow and controlled. I'm helping it up, that's two. And I'm helping it up, then one more, slow and controlled, and up, all right? And then we'll rack it. So again, as far as the number of times, to, times a week to perform, once a week, add five to 10% more weight to the bar than what you can lift one time than your max and do three, three to five reps, like I said, maybe three or four sets, you're gonna be sore. But again, it's another way, advanced technique to help you uh, bust through plateaus if you're stuck on the bench press and just not making any gains. All right, so the next advanced technique, right? We've talked about two, we talked about adding the band, we talked about um, heavy eccentric training. The next thing that you can use to um, improve your bench press strength if you're stuck in a rut, is using what are called cluster sets, okay? So typically, let's say Ethan can do this 225 10 times. You're gonna be pretty fatigued at the end of it. Um, what you can do in a cluster set to help you manage fatigue and complete maybe even more reps is you take short um, rest periods between what are called clusters. So you could do a cluster of one rep, a cluster of two reps, or a cluster of three reps. We're gonna do clusters of two. Okay, so he's gonna do 10 reps total, but he's gonna do two at a time, then take a 30 second rest period, then do two more 30 second rest period, two more 30 second rest period, and so on. So go ahead, get your closed pronated grip a little bit wider than shoulder width, unrack the bar, and we're gonna do two reps, controlled on the eccentric, back up, Control the eccentric, there you go, wrap, rack it. And then we're gonna take a 30 second rest, all right? And again, this is just helping you manage fatigue so that you can do you know, potentially more reps than you normally would with a given weight if you didn't have these little rest periods in between the clusters, okay? So it's a little different than just doing a straight set of 10, all right? And you said, have you done these before or have not? I've not done these before. So it's a, it's a good thing to use, again, to, to, you're just taking these short, brief rest periods between the sets, um, especially as you're trying to adapt to using a new load, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead, let's say that was 30 seconds, we'll knock out two more. So this would be a second cluster, 
of two. So now obviously he's done four reps total. And we would keep doing that until he got to 10 reps or 12 reps or whatever the goal was. Again, I think the main thing with these is it's really just helping you to manage fatigue and complete more reps than you normally would if you're just going to do a straight set of 10, right? The last technique that I want to talk about, and I love doing these, especially for any compound multi-joint lift, um, squats, deadlifts, shoulder presses, bench press, uh, is a pyramid set, all right? So a pyramid set is where you start with a warm-up weight. So we'll just pretend Ethan maybe had on 135 and did a set of 15. And then we might go up to 185 and do a set of 12. And then go to 225 and do a set of 10. And then go to 275 and maybe we drop it down to a set of 3 or 4. And then maybe he goes up to 300 for his last set and does one rep. Or maybe if he can squeeze out two, he does two, right? So a pyramid set, meaning that you're increasing the weight or the load each set and you're decreasing the number of reps. So again, that's one of my favorite um, types of training or, or rep and set schemes for uh, compound lifts like bench press. I hope this Fitness Facts video provided you with some new training strategies you can employ to bust through a training rut and keep making gains on your bench press. 